let's start by exploring some ideas and do an experiment. Here's what I'd like you to do. Launch the virtual manipulative, and I want you to make me five towers. One with five, one with six, one with seven, one with eight, and one with nine. You should have something that looks like this. Now what I'd like you to do is rearrange those towers so that they are all the same amount. Notice that when I move a block from this column to that column, I'm going to keep it the same color so that I can see what I'm actually doing. Normally, I have students do this with Unifix cubes if they're in front of me, but obviously you guys are just watching at home, so that's why we're using the virtual manipulatives. You can see that when I rearrange these towers, every single tower now has seven blocks. We're doing this because we're gonna do an activity called leveled blocks that you're gonna need some handouts from your packet and we're gonna do this with the virtual manipulative. So I wanted to just give us one to try on its own. What's really cool, and you may not have noticed this, was that you just found the mean. Go ahead and try it. Calculate it mathematically and see if you also get a mean of seven. We're gonna explore how to use the leveling out method to find the mean for each of these lists. What I'd like you to do is start with each one, so we'll start with list one, build that in the virtual manipulative, and then do the same thing. Level the blocks, and I'd like you to record this in your handout where you're coloring in each of the blocks with the actual color. So you'll need some colored pencils or crayons or markers. You can see for list one, I have one, three, three, two, and one. And notice that when, again, when I record this on my chart, I am recording the exact color, so I'm not changing them to be all the same color. I am literally demonstrating how I'm moving one colored block over to my column. The first two lists are gonna work out really nicely. The last two, not so much. Keep in mind that, especially for list four, you might have to think about getting out your saw, so to speak, and cutting some of those cubes in halves, thirds, fourths, etc. So you're allowed to cut them apart. That is part of how you can think of it as leveling them out still when they don't work out as nicely. The next column is going to ask you to find the mean mathematically. Here's what I expect your work to look like for that one. Remember, to find the mean mathematically, I'm going to add all of my data points together. In list one, that's one plus three plus three plus two plus one. Then I need to divide it by the number of data points that I have. One, two, three, four, five. So I see that I have five points. I am going to divide by five. Again, your answer here should be the exact same thing that you found when you leveled the blocks with your virtual manipulatives. You should have gotten a mean of two. Next, we're gonna make dot plots for this. For the dot plot, I need to think about what's my minimum value and what's my maximum value. In list one, my minimum would be one and my maximum is going to be three. So I'm going to draw a line and I'm going to make sure I have one, two, and three. Now what I'd like you to do is grab a different color and we're gonna mark the mean or the average, right? Which in this case is two. You can see I'm using this green marker to show what my mean is. Next, I wanna make sure and put little X's for each of my data points. Remember, one thing we talked about before when we do dot plots is we wanna make sure that our X's or our dots are about the same size, just so it doesn't look like I have more of a number than I really do. Next, grab another color, and we're going to literally measure the distance between each data point and the mean, and we're gonna write this down. So, from this data point right here to the mean, I can see that from one to two, it takes one. Now, you might be thinking, gosh, this sounds a lot like absolute value. You are correct. We are literally finding the absolute value between each data point and the mean. I like to represent this with a little arrow and a one just so I know exactly what I'm doing. Next, I'm gonna do this one. So again, that would be one away. From three to two, I can see that that is also one. And from this three to the mean two, it's also one. But what about this guy right here? I can't forget about him. That is zero because that point is on the mean, right? Now let's talk about the mean absolute deviation, or MAD, if you will. 